Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Caleb and this series is going to introduce you to the C++ programming language. I'm going to do everything I can to get you from a complete newbie to an intermediate or even professional level. It ultimately depends how much work you want to put into it, but I'll do what I can. Before we dive in, I wanted to give a special shout out and thank you to Embarcadero who is sponsoring this series. Embarcadero offers the C++ Builder IDE. What exactly is C++ Builder you might ask? Well it's a software where you develop your C++ code, but it allows you to deploy to iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac all from a single C++ code base. This is a great developer environment if you're looking for a visual designer, a code editor, or just a reliable code debugger. With C++ Developer, you'll have lots of libraries available to you, such as libraries for database virtualization and UI development tools that allow apps to utilize hardware acceleration when possible, and much more. Throughout this series, I'll be talking about some of the capabilities of the C++ Developer IDE, but for now, just go give it a download. I'll leave a link in the description. Check it out, give it a try, and let me know what you guys think. So here is a beautiful picture that you can look at that my uh, spouse made while I talk here for a couple seconds. As I'm sure you guys know, there are tons of video series out there on programming, so what makes this one any different than the rest of them? The two main things I have to say about that is one, my goal is to help you enjoy programming and see the fun in it, so this is going to be a very lightweight, enjoyable series. But the second thing is, I don't want to sacrifice technical correctness, so I'm hoping by the end of this series, not only did you enjoy yourself, but you actually have a really good understanding of the technical detail of a language like C++, as well as just programming in general. That being said, programming can only be so fun, <laughs> and no matter what series you're going to watch, it's definitely going to take a lot of work. I would even say that C++ is one of the harder languages to learn, but I would say even if you're a beginner, as long as you have that drive to learn, you should be able to pick up C++ and start building some really cool applications. Now before we dive in and start typing away before we know anything, <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about the concepts of C++, just to give you that foundation so once we start coding you really know what you're doing. <laughs> so the first thing, C++ is a compiled language, and I promise I'm not going to bore you with like a million slides. So what exactly is a compiled language? Well, as we build complex C++ applications, we're going to have numerous C++ files. And C++ is a programming language that once you learn it, you can read it and you understand it, but a computer cannot read and understand C++ directly. So we need a tool that takes human readable C++ code and converts that into something the computer can understand. And that process is called compilation or compiling. So step one, compilation. The second step is linking. Linking is how we get from a bunch of compiled code to one executable file. When we started, we had code over here and code over here, and we can compile those, but they're not entirely useful until we link them together into one executable. The executable is what the user of our application is going to get. An executable is basically just a fancy name for an application. These are the things we run when we open things like Google Chrome, Photoshop, Basically anything that runs on a computer is an executable. Now I would say C++ really set the path for a lot of different programming languages. This is because C++ introduced two concepts that everyone takes advantage of in any modern programming language. These are just two things I thought I would call out, but C++ has done a lot to really set the stage for development today. So the first of those two things, object-oriented programming. And if you're a newbie, this stuff might not make very much sense, but once we get into development, you'll start to see the value of this. The way object-oriented programming works is we're able to basically structure our code around these things called classes. And this would be an example of a class up here. It basically allows us to set the structure of some data, and then this is used as a blueprint to make instances. So for example, the class has name, email, and verified, but we can make two examples of that where we have Caleb, his email, and true, he is verified. Or another example, Amy, Amy's email, and false, she's not verified. So these instances are known as objects, which is the foundation of object-oriented programming. The second thing I wanted to mention is generic programming. With generic program, we're able to use or even create structures that work well with different types of data. So in this example, consider these boxes to be containers or lists. In C++, these would be known as vectors. 
And what we can do is we can create a container that accepts a certain type of data. So you can see over here, these are all integers. On the right, these are all strings. They just happen to be names in this example, but you could put anything in here like tacos, whatever it is, as long as it's in these double quotes. At first, this doesn't really seem that crazy, like, wow, we can put things in containers. <laughs> but the beauty here is that we can restrict these containers to just certain types, and it allows us to be safer because we know what type we're working with when we're working with these containers. There are generic things that are made available to us already, like I mentioned earlier, vectors. If you're coming from other programming languages, these are very similar to array lists or lists, where you would basically say, hey, I want to make a collection of type integer. If this doesn't really make a lot of sense to you right now, that's fine. Just understand that the two big things that C++ introduced was object-oriented programming and generic programming. And what exactly do I mean by introduced? Well, one of the big predecessors of C++ was the C programming language, and these capabilities were not there in C. So to really understand where C++ fits in the developer ecosystem, let's compare C++ to some of the other languages out there. So the first one is C. There's a lot of confusion between C and C++, and you'll often see things like C slash C++, but that doesn't really make sense because C and C++ are two separate entities. There's two separate programming languages. Yes, they have some similarities in nature, but they're not the same thing. They're two distinct programming languages. C++ came after C, and almost everything inside of C is also inside of C++. In a way, C++ is kind of like a superset of C in that a C program is usually an okay C++ program. There are exceptions to that, but that's a general rule of thumb. But C++ is not just C with a couple of added features. It's a whole different programming language and introduced things like object-oriented programming and generic programming, which as we just learned are two pretty big deals. So you might be new to programming, and if so, that's totally cool. I would recommend starting with C++, but if you're coming from a C background, there's probably some similarities in the way you feel when you're coding C++, at least to start. As we get into some more complex C++ concepts, we'll start picking up some capabilities you might see in some more modern languages like the object-oriented programming. How is C++ different than Java or C Sharp or even some of the languages like Python and JavaScript? Well, that's the next thing I wanted to talk about. A lot of these modern languages have capabilities like object-oriented programming, but just like C is different than C++, these modern languages are also different than C++. C++ is a beast because you can do basically anything you want and it gives you the capability to really optimize your programs, but there's a cost with that. It takes longer to learn, there's a lot more you need to know, and there's more gotchas that can come back and bite you. A lot of the languages like Java and C Sharp, they kind of abstract away the hard parts and just make programming like this really super easy experience. But as a consequence, you lose some performance and you're not as flexible when it comes to doing things you want to do. So if you want to build a cute little app, you might want to use something like C Sharp or Java. <laughs> if you really want to optimize your program and build something awesome, you definitely want to build with C++. It doesn't necessarily mean that C Sharp and Java or other languages are bad, just their purpose is different in nature. Because of these differences, you'll often see C++ used for things like engines, such as a game engine, or a video editing software, or any kind of modeling program. Anything that's extremely computationally heavy and needs to be optimized is probably going to be built in C++. This is exactly why a lot of games are developed in C++. Yes, you can build games in some of these other languages, but C++ really allows you to optimize and take control over the application. So yeah, there's your C++ introduction. I know it was kind of fluffy. It was just kind of conceptual. What we're going to be doing now in the next video, we're going to start getting our hands dirty with C++, get the tools we need, and get our first application running. Throughout this series, I want to make these concepts we've talked about in this video very concrete. We're going to be going through generic programming as well as object-oriented programming, all while trying to be technically correct with C++ because it is a different language in that you really got to know what you're doing or you're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> C++ is in this nice middle ground where it's not a pain like C, but it's also not really fluffy like some of the other programming languages mentioned here. So you're definitely not going to be wasting your time going through this series, especially since C++ is one of the more in-demand languages and has been for numerous years. And with that, I hope you're looking forward to the series. Please consider subscribing if you've enjoyed this content, as well as check the description for any useful links. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next one.